Okay, let's take a look at question four. So, uh, tells us that the NMS, the NMR spectra were below for compounds with the molecular formula of C6H12O2 and C6H12O3. So, they only differ by an oxygen atom. Uh, propose structures and assign them to the spectra below. Okay, so we have to propose structures for each of these. Now, it, it goes on to say I've listed uh, the peaks, singlet, triplets, quartets. It's asked us to assign these peaks in the NMR to your proposed structures below. So all we really have to do is build some structures and assign each of these signals to those structures. I have the answers here, but let's uh, take a look at how we might work this problem out. So uh, we have C6H12O2 and C6H12O3. One of the things I always do when doing a structure determination uh, problem is calculate the unsaturation rate. Okay. So the nice thing about things that only have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen is because oxygen has two bonds, it doesn't appear in the formula for the unsaturation number. So if you're familiar, you can figure these out because they would be the same as they would for a hydrocarbon. So in other words, both of these compounds have C6H12, okay? So a normal hydrocarbon, we expect to be CnH2n plus 2, but this is CnH2n. It has an unsaturation number of 1. You could figure that out by using the uh, formula for unsaturation number, if you like. Now let's take a look at these spectra. Uh, we have to assign two of them. So if we take a look at the spectra, we see that they almost overlap. We have a triplet around 1.2 for each of them. We have a singlet around two for each of them. This one has a triplet around 2.6. This one does not. They both have a quartet that's around 3.4, and they both have a triplet that's around 3.6, and the one on the bottom has a triplet around 4.5, okay? So something, these look very similar, and the only difference is the peak here at 2.6 on the top, seems to get shifted over to here. These other ones, I'm going to be thinking maybe they're very similar. Now, the next thing we might want to do is think about uh, what gives us something that integrates for three. I always like to say, if it says it integrates for th three, think about CH3. Doesn't mean it is CH3, but we'll think about CH3. And we have a singlet at CH3, so that's another, I'm sorry, a singlet that integrates for three, and we have three CH2, CH2 groups have two connectings. I'm making jigsaw pieces is what I'm doing, okay? So if I take a look, I've now accounted for one, two, three, four, five carbons, okay? I have six, so I have another carbon I haven't accounted for yet. So let's put that there. Oh, do we have any hydrogens we haven't accounted for? Three plus three is six, plus two, plus two, plus two. So another six is 12. We've taken care of all the hydrogens. So uh, we have a, I'm gonna put them over here and I'm gonna make them green. We have a carbon unaccounted for an oxygen unaccounted for, and red in the structure below, we have an additional oxygen, okay? So let's think about this. We have an unsaturation number of one. We have one, we know we have a double bond, at least one double bond or a ring, okay? So uh, let's assume we have a double bond. The only double bond we could have then is a carbon-oxygen double bond. So I'm going to combine those two to tell me that I have a carbon-oxygen double bond. Oh, so let's combine those two. Uh, I'm going to erase them, make a carbonyl group. There's your 
carbon needle group. Carbon needle group is a jigsaw puzzle with two connectors. I also forgot we have another oxygen. Two oxygens up top and three oxygens down below. Okay, so let's think a little bit now about what else we see in the spectrum. Okay, we do have those commonalities. We have a CH3 that's a singlet. What kind of CH3 group can be a singlet? If we take a look at all of our connecting pieces, we're going to take one of these CH3 groups. I'm going to take one of these CH3 groups. Let's move it down here. And I'm going to connect it to something else. So these are my pieces of a puzzle, and I'm going to try and hook them together. If my CH3 group that's a singlet is bonded to any one of these compounds, any one of them, it wouldn't be a singlet, would it? It would have to couple with the hydrogens on that carbon that would be next to it. So it can't be bonded to any of those. So it must be either bonded to an oxygen or the carbon of a carbonyl group. There's two ways it could be bonded to an oxygen. So I'm going to draw all three of the possibilities. Uh, and I'm going to draw those in a nice violet color. And I'm going to erase the ones that don't work. So I have a CH3 group. And I could either have it bonded to an oxygen of an ether. I could also have it bonded to an oxygen of an ester. Or I could have it bonded directly to the carbonyl group. Those are my three possibilities that would give me singlets. Those are the only three possibilities I have that would give me singlets. We would then look at our charts and we would say, where would I expect this to come? I would expect this to come somewhere around maybe 3.4 or more, 3 point ppm or greater. We don't have a singlet there, do we? Our singlet is at 2. So I'm over there at the spectrum on the right. There's our singlet at two on both, both structures. Okay, so we don't have a singlet at two. That means, that means we can get rid of this one because we don't have, a, our singlet is not at 3.2, it's at two. We can get rid of that one. Or would we expect this? We would expect this one even further downfield because it's bonded to an ester. We'll, we'll see that that should be 3.5 or greater, so we can get rid of it. Where do we expect a CH3 bonded to a carbonyl? Somewhere around 2, 2.1. Okay. Again, take a look down at the lower right, and our singlet is at. 2.1 and just under 2.1 so uh, it must be this piece so this CH3 group must be bonded there okay so that's my group that I have I'm gonna draw that uh, I'm pretty confident I'm gonna draw CH3, CO, the connector. I'm going to erase this. Okay. These are my unused puzzle pieces. I used two of them. Okay. Now let's focus on the other CH3 group over here. Both of them are around one. Okay. And they're triplets. What can we have that's that? So I'm going to take that CH3 group down out of my pool, and it's a triplet. Well, I still have an oxygen, an oxygen. I have these oxygens, okay? They're not bonded to it, then it wouldn't be a triplet. It must be bonded to one of these, okay? So let's take one of those down. There's our puzzle piece, okay? So I'm going to replace this up because my fragments I'm building are making them bigger. I'm just making them bigger. 
So now I have a CH3, CH2 group. We expect that this would be a triplet integrating for three, and this would be a quartet integrating for two. And we have a quartet way down here integrating for two at about 3.4. So that's kind of nice. So now I'm going to I'll go ahead and make my ethyl group. That's now in my fragment library. Those are still in my fragment library. That's my fragment library. I'm going to erase this because I combine them. Look at my fragment library. It's getting to be smaller and smaller fragments. Okay. Now, I've taken care of the CH3, the CH2, the singlet, so I've taken care of these three peaks, and the quartet, that CH2. I'm left with two triplets. One of them is, the, is right here, and the other one is here, but gets shifted down there. So how can I have a CH2 group? Let's focus on the CH2 group. How can we make it a triplet? Oh, easy. Find another CH2 group to it. So that's now a new fragment that I'm going to draw up in our fragment library. CH2, CH2. Notice how I have fewer fragments that are bigger now. Okay. Now all I have to do is connect these things up uh, somehow to account for these two spectra. Okay. So obviously I have uh, oxygens left to bond. Uh, probably, let's arrange our fragments. One fragment here. There's a fragment in the middle. And there's an oxygen. And I'm just going to take this fragment and turn it around. I'm going to make it CH2, CH3. Just so I can connect them together. Okay. Still move all these, but does this make sense uh, in terms of uh, our signals? So we've already taken care of the singlet. Makes sense. This actually makes sense for one of my molecules. So we expect this to be a CH2 group. Let's draw another molecule. Uh, throw the oxygen in, and where can we put that oxygen and keep all the splitting the same? We got to insert this oxygen somewhere so that we don't change the splitting. So let's think of where we can put that oxygen. Okay. We cannot. I'm going to use uh, blue for places I can't insert that. I can't insert. Well, I could insert the oxygen there but it would change the chemical shift, that singlet, so I can't put them there. Uh, I could put it there to make an ester. That would change that chemical shift, but we need to came the, and that one is right there, probably, okay? If we put an oxygen in there, it would come way down. Oh, I think I got my answer, okay? So I can maybe put it in there. Let's make that a green light. I can't insert it in there because that would break up. The, uh, if we inserted it in there, this one would no longer be a triplet. It would now be a singlet. So I can insert my oxygen there. I 
I suppose I could insert my oxygen there, but that, oh, sorry. I could insert my oxygen there, but that's not going to change very much. Uh, same thing there, not going to change things very much. And if I put it in there, it's going to break those two triplets. Uh, that ethyl group is now, um, those would both be singlets, so it can't go in there. The only place it can go is to put my oxygen right in there. So this is one piece. Our other piece is CH3. There's other things that explain the splitting, but nothing that explains the chemical shifts. So then we just have to go ahead and assign them. And we've actually kind of already did that. Oops, I can also get rid of that extra oxygen because I have it in there. Let's, let's drop this. these arrows I figured it all out okay next we're going to take a look at number four